Dark Sides of Social Media How AI is constantly monitoring you Did you ever get yourself out of your phone and ponder how much social media has been integrated into our lives? How much have we become dependent on mobile phones, laptops, and specifically the internet? You see something you like, you like and you share it. You see something you dislike, and you rant about it on the internet. You want to get up early, so you set an alarm. You want to cook something, you Google the recipe. You want the latest news, there are hundreds and thousands of sources online. You got a promotion at work, you instantly tweet about it. You go to that fancy restaurant, you instantly upload pictures on social channels. You want a new pair of shoes? Just go online and order them with next day delivery. You need a doctor's appointment? You book an online consultancy session. You need relationship advice? You Google it. But all of these are benefits, right? You're sure that these things make our lives easier and simpler. There couldn't be any downside, right? You're not even paying to use the social apps. Are they really free though? Let us burst your bubble of happiness and inform you that when something is free, you are the product. You sell yourself, your time, and your data to consume free content. The internet is decentralized, but the large tech giants whose apps you constantly browse on are all centralized entities that have complete control over your data. Fun fact, you may have thought of something or discussed something with your friends about buying something, and guess what happens next? An ad pops up within minutes of that conversation of the exact same product. Is your mobile device listening to you? Well, yes and no. In this video, we'll be talking about your data points, data brokers, how easy it is to gather your data, how AI analyzes your data, and how easily you give your consent to websites that track you. Buckle up, as this is going to be a bumpy ride. Please watch the video till the end, and make sure to hit that bell icon to stay updated when our new videos come out. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more insightful content. So get ready as we uncover facts and unravel the actual reality of these so-called free-to-use internet and social media apps. Let's start with a simple concept. Data points. Data points are small bits of your personal information that your family and even your friends might know. Sorry to break it to you, but the internet also knows. How, you ask? The social media apps that you use, your favorite shopping sites, the tweets that you put out, the rants that you make online, all of these are responsible for collecting all of this data. Your name, age, phone number, height, weight, shopping preferences, shopping patterns, likes, dislikes, political beliefs, email, religious beliefs, credit score, and much, much more. All of these are data points and are extremely valuable. Valuable to who, you ask? Advertisers. With these data points, advertisers can learn the behavior patterns and analyze potential customers and target their product in a specific way and present it at a specific time when a user is most likely to buy. But how do these advertisers get a hold of our personal data? Welcome to the world of data brokers. The first thing that pops up in your mind may be Google, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc. But these tech giants don't sell your data. Well, they don't as far as we know. But there might actually be a possibility that they do. But here we are talking about companies that act as data brokers who sell your data. And the interesting bit is that you may have never even heard of their name as they operate in the shadows and behind your back. This very moment, there may be a bargain going on between data brokers and advertisers to sell your data for cash. Your data is more valuable than gold. <laughs> we may be speaking metaphorically, but the agencies that purchase your data can leverage that and make huge profits. Some experts claim that the personal data sold may be even more valuable than the product or service itself that the advertisers are advertising to you. Think about that for a moment. Let's categorize personal information into two parts. There is personal information that we willingly post online and set it as public. This information is available for anyone to view about you. 
Some things that are not so openly disclosed are highly sensitive. Things that only your local supermarket knows about how frequently you shop, what you shop for, and your behavioral patterns. Your lawyer's agency has all of your legal records, and vehicle licensing agencies have all of your private information. The hospitals you visit have a complete medical record, and here is where the data brokers come in. They buy small portions of your information from various sources and then sell them. But is this even legal? Are websites allowed to just hand over your data to others? Well, technically, when you agree to the terms and conditions of the website, you're basically allowing them control over your data, and they can do whatever they want with it. We don't even bother reading the terms and conditions, and we just click accept without knowing how much data we are handing over. Another sneaky way these websites track you and your data is via cookies. You may have heard of this term before and even accepted cookies when trying to browse a website, but this sweet name has a hidden secret. Cookies are used to track all of the websites that you visit, where you shop from, etc. By accepting cookies, you're basically allowing the website to track your online activity. The more raw data a data broker has, the more insightful they can make it. See, raw data gives you basic information, but analyzed data can give you human behavior patterns. These patterns are the key valuable resource for advertisers to leverage. Algorithms are set in place to analyze and crunch your data to output meaningful patterns with the help of artificial intelligence. By just analyzing your top three favorite brands, the algorithm can guess that you're likely to buy from brands A and B. By analyzing your purchase history, the algorithm can predict your age, if you're a parent or not, if you're looking to lose weight, for example, if you like specific types of clothes, and if you may like a similar brand or not. By analyzing your frequent locations, the algorithm can point to where you work, live, shop, go to school or university, which outlets you shop from, which friends you visit, how often you leave town, and much more. Finally, after all of this data is compiled, who buys it? Primarily advertisers, as we discussed before, but there can be other potential buyers as well. Insurance companies can benefit from such data and target their insurance to people who have a risky lifestyle. Have you recently purchased a fast motorcycle? Or have you recently tweeted photos of you skydiving? Then get ready for that information to get flagged out by insurance companies and for you to start paying high insurance premiums on your health and life insurance. Banks can benefit from analyzing your credit card history and offer you higher or lower interest rates on the loans you take. There are websites that store data about people and you can access that information for a small fee. These websites benefit greatly from gathering your data. Governments that track people would really like to know that person's precise location. And finally, other data brokers. Data brokers sell your data to other data brokers who can further refine and bring out more insights from your data. This chain is invisible and works in the shadows, and you don't know through how many hands your data has passed before reaching its final destination. And here comes the final question. Should you even bother that you're being tracked and your personal data is being gathered and sold off? Well, why don't you tell us? If you have nothing to hide, then you probably won't care. If you're self-conscious, you may want to limit your online activity. Let us know in the comments if this bothers you or not. Thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you next time.